This is our seventh encounter um, on the exhibit of Father Jasani, and everyone has been just absolutely stunning. And I'm looking forward to nothing less with my two great, great friends, Barbara Galliotti and Father Rich Veris, who are our speakers today. Um, Barbara is in uh, Rockville, Maryland, and she's an educator and just a fine human being. And Father Rich Veris is at the seminary in uh, New York. The, is it St. John's Seminary? St somebody, St. Joseph, St. Joseph, in the year of St. Joseph. Yes. Even when it's not the year of St. Joseph. Okay. Well, there we go. So it's a St. Joseph seminary in, um, in New York and Barbara and Father Rich have been friends of mine for over 30 years. So I'm really excited to have them here. And we have our two um, tech support volunteers, which I'm super grateful for. So we have Matt and we have Lisa who got engaged this morning. So um, anyway, we thank you both for being here, especially you, Lisa, because you're not like calling everyone you know right now. You've been volunteering for the New York Encounter, which is really moving. Um, I'm so happy to see all the faces and cameras open so we can kind of wave at each other and say hello. And many of you have already participated in this discussion. So thank you for coming. Um, just a rule for the road, this is being recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, you should probably get off, which I hope you don't. Um, so yeah, I hope we're all here and, uh, and don't mind being recorded. And I don't know what's going to happen with the recording, but hopefully it won't be used against us in the court of law. So here we go. Um, the topic today is really this exhibit on the life of Father Giussani. And the exhibit this year is very different than it has been in the past. In the past, it's been, you know, something hanging on a wall and people, docents giving you a tour. And this year, uh, we have a video, which is really beautiful. It was made many years ago by a good friend of ours, Roberto Fontelan, who's a journalist in Italy. And um, yet it wasn't really seen in American audiences because of subtitles weren't added. And now we have subtitles. So um, it is absolutely stunning. So um, yeah, so we'll talk more about that later, but I wanted to just start off first by asking, you know, this very simple question, which might not be so simple to both Barbara and Father Rich. And that is this, you know, both of your lives have been marked um, indelibly, I would say, by Father Father Giussani, meeting him personally, both of you um, having had personal encounters with him. And, you know, we'd like to know, first of all, how did that encounter happen? And then how did that mark your life? We'll start with Barbara. Okay. Um, that's a great word, indelible. It's a, it's a, it's a right word. Um, First, thank you. Thanks for asking me to be here. And, you know, it's so moving to see so many faces or you know, names of people that are out there who, you know, um, each one of us could tell our stories. So it's, it's a little bit daunting to do that. Um, but I, I met, uh, you know, um, the movement in 1984, I believe. Uh, in 1985, there were uh, a number of families and young adults in, in New York, uh, particularly Luigi, who I see here, who's on this call. And, um, and um, Father Giussani, I mean, I didn't, I mean, I hadn't had the occasion to meet Father Giussani first. I had the occasion to meet these people, right? And these, um, something, yes, that indelibly marked me and, and moved me. Um, the first chance I had to meet Father Giussani was in 1986, when he came to visit these nascent communities that were dispersed around the United States, uh, mostly in Boston and Washington and us in New York, but there were a few other families or, or people uh, scattered about maybe there were 50 of us who came together that weekend in New York. And um, so we spent the weekend with him. Um, but, but one of the things, I mean, I, I can't say that I really had a sense of what was going on. I could not have explained to you what was happening at the time, uh, but I knew something uh, interesting was happening and it wasn't what, what it could ultimately mean for my life. I, I really couldn't say. Well, the depth of the things that he was saying, I, I don't think I would be able to recount to you. But it was more, you know, like an impression, you know, growing up in America, growing up in New York, you had a sense that life was, you know, there was this promise of greatness. 
And you had images of what that promise of greatness meant, you know, it meant riches, it meant wealth, you know, we were in New York, it meant fame. Uh, but it was real, it was there, it was there very prominent, you know. And I and I think, you know, I think back, you know, I think to the gospel passage that he always uh, cited to us, that of John and Andrew, you know, that day on the on the beach, you know, what that could have meant for them over the course of many years of thinking, you know, thinking back on it. So, you know, just an example of that. Um, we had a, um, he gave us a lesson. We, we all came together for a lesson at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the question and answer session that we had was, you know, our, our questions were very schematic. They were very, in some ways superficial, maybe generic, you know, what, what was prayer, you know, this, this type of, which are very important questions. But when I go back and read that transcript, which I urge everyone to do, and it's online, it's March 8th, 1986. The depth of the answers that came back to our, to our questions was, was, is stunning to me now. And you go back and you read it and you're like, wow, you know, it was the full force of everything, you know, coming at you all the time. And I would say that was sort of the experience of Father Jusain. You always had um, this man who, with all of his passion and with all of his might and with all of his person, was was communicating to you and had this this desire to communicate Jesus present to you. That was just, you know, that experience is something that is, you know, re recurrent. And maybe I can say more about that, you know, when we get to the video. You know, and then his, you know, attention to to you as a person was was always striking, or just attention to details. You know, I remember that that Sunday we we gathered for mass with Cardinal it was Cardinal O'Connor back then, and my mother came and with my aunt, and they came back to me, Father Giussani. You know, and from that moment on, every time I met Father Giussani, he asked me, you know, how was your mother? And it was, you know, it was, it was, it was moving because this man met thousands and thousands and thousands of people, but he always took the time to ask me how my mother was. So, you know, th those are just kind of snippets of things. Um, you know, how it changed my life. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, um, I would say, you know, for sure a vocation. You know what, what that what that greatness alluded to. What 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 life was for. Um, he walked with me in in a way to help me understand. You know what what my vocation was and what was the path toward that greatness. You know, and I would just say this one thing. You know, of the of the four of us who were really you know who who met Father who met the movement who were in the movement in 1986, Luigi, myself. Christina, Chris Bath. I mean, we were kind of the, the core group for a number of years. You know, out of the four of us, three of us entered Memorist Domini. And as you know, Luigi <laughs> has married himself and has uh, five children, and, and two of whom are who dedicated themselves, who he educated to this openness and to this greatness that two of them have dedicated their lives to, to, to God in, in the convent. So the, the experience that we had of living this charism um, was so strong, you know, that it led us to dedicate our, to dedicate our lives and all of our lives. And Luigi has dedicated his entire life uh, to the movement and his entire family to the movement. So um, I think I'll stop there unless you've got some more questions you want me to follow up with. That was beautiful, Barb. Thanks so much. And I'm recounting, I met the movement in um, 1985 um, as well through Father Giussani and um, just a very strange uh, ending up in Italy on vacation and staying for two years after having met him. And I can think I can say exactly the same thing. There was an attention to you as a human being that was just unheard of, unexperienced in other, in other ways. So, um, but we'll get into me another time. Father Rich, thank you, Barb. 
I, I also met CL in New York in 1988, in March of uh, 1988. And, um, and so I didn't meet Jasani till 11 years after that. So my encounter with the, with the charism through these people, I mean, for me, I would just say, simply say Christ be was, became an objective fact. I can't not, I'm speaking poetically here, I guess, but not even an object of faith anymore, simply an objective fact, as objective as the physicality of the people in the community with me. And, um, and it was very, I don't know, I, it was just very clear to me that the, the friendship these people have, some of these people in particular have for me is absolutely Christ has entered my life. And that's what led me to the priesthood. I met the movement as a lay person. And that's what led me to the priesthood. So by the time I meet Jasani, uh, I've already so much, um, it's already, I'm already impacted indelibly. And, and in a certain sense, I have to say, had I never met him, I would be impacted no less indelibly by his charism. And, um, and so how did I begin to meet him? In 1999, I started getting involved. I heard there was a Studium Christicus group of priests in Italy that followed, you know, uh, somebody said you should go to Italy and meet them. I went with great cynicism because I thought my life is in New York. Well, you know, uh, who cares what's going on in Milan? My life is in New York. And then Don Giorgio Pontigia was very involved with Studium Christi at the time. He was a priest who did a lot with GS and for whatever reason, just, just had a soft heart for me. <laughs> and, and he was, he seemed to me like a pretty hard, crusty priest who yelled a lot, but for some reason he had a soft spot for me. And so from 1999 forward for a number of years, every year at this time in February, because in New York, we have a week winter vacation in February, every year I would go to be with the Studium Christi priests. I kind of made it my priest retreat each year. And the first time I went, I, I, I met Father Giussani at a dinner in Gouda, which was very beautiful. And that was probably the only time I met Jasani where it was a planned meeting, like, the, like a, there was an invitation and I was going. The rest of the years, Father Giorgio Pontigia was just, my impression was he was a pushy guy. And every time I went to Italy, he, hell or high water, he was gonna have me meet Jasani. And so pretty much every encounter I had with Jasani after that was Pontigia forcing me into some place I didn't belong. And uh, you know, a dinner here, a breakfast there. I, I go to the house like late at night, and Giselle is upset because he's he's gone up to bed, and they make me go up alone and meet him in his rooms. <laughs> so poor Father Jasani must have gotten used to the fact that in February, Pontita is going to get bring this guy to me at whatever moment. And and so a really significant meeting was when. I'm ushered into this lunch that Jasani is having with people who seem to be the responsibles of various countries. I feel like I read on their faces, like what, what is Pontigia doing? Pontigia plops, plops me in the seat. Jasani's at the head of the table and I'm like catty corner right next to him and Pontigia leaves. You know, so, and I know, I know I don't belong here. You know, and I wanna leave too because, but Pontigia leaves and Jasani is totally attentive to me the rest of this lunch. You know, also listening to the other people, but wanting, do I want, am I okay? Do I like this? Do I want some wine? I don't like wine, but I drank it because I didn't want to be rude because Dasani was um, very attentive, very, very fatherly. And, and, and I really think it was an expression also of his affection for Pontigia. You know, my friend Pontigia has a preference for this guy. Therefore, I have a preference for this guy. And therefore, this guy is welcome. But at that meeting, um, I think it was Giorgio Vitadini was talking about things happening in America and things in this community and that community. And this was so amazing to me. And at a certain point, Jasani got very excited. And Jasani said, you see, you see, now I understand, now I understand. For 14 years, I've been wanting to go back to the United States for 14 years. And for 14 years, I can't. Things would come up, whether it was his health or other things. So for 14 years, he couldn't get there. And he said, and now I see, now I see, because those people these things are happening to never met me. So you can't say this is a personalism, this is the Holy Spirit. And I was, I almost jumped out of my skin yesterday because I was on the, this, this call with Ken and Margaret and somebody said, how do we know this is not a cult of personality? And I remembered that meeting when Jasani, Jasani was thrilled it wasn't a cult of personality. For him, the miracle that they, that they're meeting the charism. This is the Holy Spirit. They're meeting the charism 
without me. And one of the meetings that I'd like to highlight with him was I was there again in, in February, or my, this might've been a few months later because this was with a group of priests. And it was just this, a group of priests and a bunch of us were gonna go to Italy together to I think see Studium Christi or something, but word got out and any, uh, whatever priest ended up coming on this trip. So at very various levels of involvement or interest in the movement. And at one point we're told, okay, we, we, we always had lunch in Milan where Giussani was because they weren't sure if he would be healthy one day to meet us, but he wanted to meet us. So finally one day we're told, yes, he's gonna meet all of you. We didn't expect this at all. We're going up. And, you know, and, and they tell us, you know, th if you have something to say, just think of what you say, because there's not going to be much time. And, and <laughs> we had a couple of really talkative priests. And I, I remember being in the elevator going up thinking, oh, no, I, I want to take advantage of this time. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want the, so lo and behold, one of the talkative guys who's not particularly involved with the movement asked Jasani what he thought of the pontificate of Paul VI. <laughs> and, <laughs> I thought, oh no, we were told to really be sparing with our words, take advantage of this time. And now uh, poor Jasani is gonna have to address Paul VI and these other priests wanted to, uh, more to meet and maybe ask more personal questions than the pontificate of Paul VI. And uh, I remember getting very upset and Jasani answered the question beautifully, so beautifully. And the way he described Paul VI and Paul VI's love for Christ and the way Paul VI had to suffer as a Pope. Speaking about Paul VI was to me when as much to the depth of my heart as if we had asked him personal questions of our lives. You know, and so what impressed me in that moment was I was the one being schematic. You know, we're gonna meet Jasani, we've got to talk about movement things or Studium Christi or what, you know, and, and this guy just has this out of the blue question about Paul VI, but for Jasani, nothing was peripheral. And he was happy to talk, to spend that time talking about Paul VI. And, um, you know, I, I would say meeting after meeting and, and, and always welcomed me. And as I said, except for that first time I was at a dinner, every other meeting and, and those priests that was planned as well. <laughs> All the other meetings was Ponti just shutting me into a place I didn't belong. And, um, and Jasani was always, um, was always very, very, very welcoming, you know? Um, but I, I, I just, I, I wanna leave us with what Jasani said, his excitement about not having met those people. And it was a great, great privilege of, for, to meet, to meet Jasani and I, and I, um, a great, great privilege, a great, great preference. Um, but, and as I'm sure many of people on this call who maybe never met him could understand, had I never met him, had I not had those moments, I would be no less his son or a son of this charism. Because as, as I said, I was 11 years in um, and, 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 and this charism led me to the priesthood. And okay, the last thing I'll say is, what also moves me about is Paul's sixth question. You know, I think there, there could be a temptation, I think in any church community or movement to get schematic or get um, uh, self-referential. And, and part of my, the challenge of my path, uh, and, and Barbara is connected to this, she might, she might not even remember, you know, I didn't enter Memorist Domini. I didn't enter Charles Borromeo. My encounter with the movement brought me to the priesthood of the Archdiocese of New York, the diocesan priesthood, which seemed a strange path at that time. All my friends are getting married and going to Memorist Domini. Why am, I pick, why am I getting the old maid's card and going to the diocesan priesthood? And, um, and I'll never forget that, um, I don't know if you remember this, Barbara, it was my, my retreat for diaconate ordination, where for a diocesan priest, that's your commitment. That's your first that, that's the point of no return. And then, you, or, or being ordained a priest is beautiful, it is, 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 is what you're headed toward. But the diaconate is when you really promise your life. And on that retreat, Barbara sent me a beautiful card from you, and I think from the Center of Memorist Domini, giving me some lessons that are reserved only for Memorist Domini. But there was permission that those lessons can be given to me to read on that retreat. And I'll never forget, in one of those lessons, Jasani describes a young man who met the movement and wanted to be Memorist Domini because that seemed the most movement-y thing to do. 
and discerned instead that his vocation was to the monastery. And, and Jasani, the way Jasani described it, he said, and so with an acceptance, maybe even with a little bit of sadness, he said yes and understood my vocation is to the monastery. And I have never forgotten the importance of that to me because I was, I was two days away from being ordained a deacon for the Archdiocese of New York. And for me, it was, it was, it was Christ himself through the charism of Jasani. Jasani was still living at that time. So he wasn't, but it was Christ himself with the charism of Jasani saying, you go forward, you go forward. There is no, there is no cookie cutter vocation. This charism as Jasani would say, anyone can be welcome in our charism because it goes to the very root of Christianity. And so for me, it was very moving to sort of follow this path and even as I'm speaking to you, I'm even wondering if for Pontija, it's why I had such a, a, a soft heart for me. You know, here's this poor guy thinks maybe he did less because he's not a member of Stomini or Charles Borromeo. And he just always made sure I was right there uh, in front of Jasani when I would visit Italy once a year. Beautiful. That, Father Rich, that just rings, a, it just rings so true thinking of all the many friends I have who are being edified by following Father Dusani's words. Um, I think of Father Michael, who's on the call. Hi, Father Michael, a Franciscan fire of the renewal, the sisters of Mary Mother in the Eucharist and Carmelites, and so many of our wonderful friends who, um, like we're edified by the founders of so many movements. They are, are edified really by the finding the depth and even in their vocations through the writings of Jasani. So um, we're gonna switch gears just a little bit here. So as I said earlier, the exhibit is actually a movie. It's a film that was made by Roberto Fontelan several years ago. And I'd like to show um, the, the trailer of that just to get us going on our next question. L'uomo non può immaginare un problema più grande per la sua libertà. Cristo, sì o no? Sempre rimasto nella sua gravità di profeta, di uomo dei miracoli. Donna, non piange, disse. E resta tu il figlio. Ma disse più la donna, non piange. Un uomo che non viva un momento così con la sua donna, non ha mai amato la sua donna, mai. Un padre ed una madre sono tali non solo perché danno latte prima e risotto dopo al figlio che cresce, ma un padre e una madre danno loro stessi, un padre da sé stesso al figlio. Il mio padre, quando ho tanto ora, mi ha detto, mi raccontava la parabola ricco e purone, lui era un socialista accanito, perciò tutte le sere ricco e purone. Perché l'aspettavano così? Perché credo in quello che dico. Questo è basta? Sì. So hopefully that little taste of um, the video will encourage you to watch the whole thing. It's just, it's 100% Jusani. It's it's not any anybody making commentary, et cetera. The, the scene that always moves me, and I've seen this so many times, like many of you have, um, especially those of you prepared for these en encounters, that um, that scene where he, he says, well, you know, when the journalist asked him, why do people follow you? And he said, because I believe what I say. And, and like I'm the real deal, right? And so I think, you know, I'd like to hear from Rich and, and Father and, and, uh, and Barbara, but, you know, for me, the fact that he was the real deal all the time, like I knew Father Giussani was young and healthy, younger and healthy to right before his death. And he was always the same. And I think that's what struck me about the video. It's the same message, the same intensity, the same love for Christ. Like he never wavered from that, that, um, that's we say that red line, so to speak. So 
Father Rich, why don't you start us off? Or actually, yeah, Father Rich, why don't you start us off? What, what was interesting about the video for you, um, the full length of one hour? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was a couple of things that came out of the, you know, unless you're, reading, you're seeing like, like passages of different talks and, um, and it just interested me because I feel like what, whatever you're sort of going through in your life, I think when you watch this video, certain passages might really strike you more than others. But this really, at one point he says, he's speaking of education and he, he said, love cannot be demanding obedience on the basis of a persuasion, a conviction not yet formed. The human person is free relationship with destiny, with God, with truth, with goodness. The person is a free relationship and so the way they search for destiny will follow, the way the, the search for destiny will follow in him is mysterious. And um, I think that's moving to me because if, if we look at what is, what continues to come from the encounter with Jasani, it's uh, the New York encounter, the you in a school, uh, Barbara with Odyssey. Jasani just had this trust of, of encounter Christ and 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 you don't know what's going to come from that, you know. So the, the way the search for destiny will follow a person is mysterious. And again, I know Luigi and, and Suzanne Tanzi are on this call. What a, a beautiful, beautiful! I say I say mass once a month, once a week for the postulants of the Sisters of Life. Another charism that uh, tell me that they feel like they're, they're cousins of 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 CL. And as you may know, Luigi and Suzanne's daughter Isabel, who's now Sister Elizabeth Fiat Carolina. Is, is with them and I would see her every week. And now sometimes I do things at the mother house and I'll see her there. And, um, and I think as Jasani said, the way that the search for destiny will follow in a person is mysterious. You know, so, so the charism of CL ha has led Sister Elizabeth Carolina to the charism of the Sisters of Life. The, 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 the freedom, the freedom and the mystery of seeing what, and Jasani speaks so much about vir virginity and being non-possessive of the person. How could our movement be in so many places in the world and be manifest in so many different uh, works and, 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 and ways and forms? How could that be except a virginal look at the person, a, a total trust that the encounter with Christ, um, I, can trust, I can trust Jesus to work in the heart of a person. I can trust Jesus to work in the companionship and I don't need to place any um, any parameters or formulas or boundaries on, on what Christ will do through this charism. It, it, it's not an inward charism. It's, it's a charism that I think, I think history has witnessed, just, just sends us forth. Thank you, Father. Barbara? Yeah, you know... Um... <clears throat> I had, um, I mean, um, I spent four years in Italy um, from 1989 through 1993. You know, so much did the uh, encounter with Giussani and his charism impact me. I, I, I had this sense that I, I needed, I just needed to go, you know, go to the source in a lot of ways, you know. So I had many, many occasions to to see Father Giussani personally, but many more occasions to see, to hear him speak, you know? Um, and I think that's the thing that really kind of came at me. And I think that was, I don't know for sure, but I think that was Roberto's intention in putting all of like those speech things in the beginning where you get this, you can, you can follow uh, certain speeches of Father Giussani, these little snippets there. And what, that's kind of what hit me the most about the documentary. This, because when you were listening to him speak, there was this impression, you know, you had, I mean, you were gripped by what, not just what he was saying, but you know, who he was. This power of, um, you know, of Jesus coming at you. There's really no other way to kind of describe it, even if you were in the midst of uh, thousands of people. You had the sense that you were that you were being spoken to personally. This was a personal invitation and provocation to you, and you had to, in some way, respond. You, you heard that question. You know, there's no other, you know, more important question for the life of a person. Jesus, yes or no? Um, 
and I, you know, you had that, I had that, certainly had that impression myself many, many times, that the forcefulness, you know, the, the sort of, what it brought out in you, what it elicited to you, you know, raising your heart, you know, to the, to the level of the heart's desires and, you know, evoking a promise um, in you. So all of those things happened as you listen, you know, listen to him speak. Um, but also in reading the books, you know, this, this could happen in reading the books. And it did happen for me in reading the books. Um, so I, I, you know, that's that's the thing that really kind of gripped me about uh, about watching that film. You know, giving the people the chance to be in front of that personality through which Jesus is coming towards you, um, and it, and the totalizing claim that it that it evokes, you know, from us. You know, and, and clearly, uh, you know, us all being here is, um, you know, in, in the same way that 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 Father Giussani represented Christ, you know, that made Christ, you know, present to us. I mean, what happens, you know, whenever we let ourselves be dragged along by the by the attraction for Jesus, you know, and that we are called to be that same presence of Jesus in the world to others, you know. As St. Paul says, if you're a speaker, speak. If you're a teacher, teach. If you're an accountant, account, you know. Um, but that's what I really, I mean, appreciate it, I think, most about that, uh, that film. Thank you. Thank you both. Wow. So I am going to open it up right now to questions. So if anybody has a question for Father Rich or for Barbara about anything they said or you know, question about anything. <laughs> um, go ahead and raise your either virtual hand or your physical hand. Let it be known that you have a question. You might have to do this. Um, and the our tech support will open up your, your mic for you. or a comment. Am I on? You're on, Father Michael. Hey, yeah, I, well, hello from England and uh, I'm in London, but uh, beautiful, I watched the movie yesterday, so I did get a chance to see the whole thing. It was just beautiful and, you know, it just, it moves me to tears because I think uh, I'm reading his, his life, that large volume of his life now, and, um, and I'm like, how could this guy be touching me so deeply? Like, how, he doesn't, I don't know him, I've never met him. And, and, and so how is it? And, and I listened to the, uh, the papal nuncio last night as well, you know, and there's, there's like, the word that came to me was just like, he just helps me calibrate my heart, <laughs> you know? Like, it is like a calibration of my heart. Like, I just, I'm so with him when I hear him. And then in today's second reading, you know, for mass, we had this, which always strikes me, you know, where Paul says, um, you know, uh, take me for your model as I take Christ. And that's like, how could Paul say that? You know, like, how could he say that? Look to me. And when Giussani's saying, you know, I think what Rich, the words that I think you might have pointed out, Holly, that's what struck me too, is like, people believe what I'm saying. It's almost like, because Christ is true. Like, look at me, like Paul is saying, look at me and see Christ. I think the same thing for Johnny, uh, Jasani. And so when I'm looking at Jasani, he's just pointing me to a fuller humanity. So how does it work in a Franciscan vocation? It, it's, it's, the, it's the response to Christ, you know, who, who's real, who calls all hearts, you know, to himself. And so it always becomes uh, this place of just, um, a, a, you come alive, excitement, uh, more than excitement. I don't want to use the struck the word struck, <laughs> you know, but it, but you know it's a great word. But in a sense, it's, it can be overused. So you know, it it, it becomes alive, alive, you know, alive and 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 has life. And uh, so it's a comment more than than, but just to see it maybe from somebody who hasn't met him, to maybe uh, to put into your conversation. And so it's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Father Rich, Barbara, any reaction? 
I want to say, first of all, Father Michael, thank you for that, because it's it's so true. I mean, how many of us on the call have met him personally? It doesn't matter because they, we've met his children, right? To meet his children is to meet him. It's like, you know, the scene in the in the movie, which you haven't all seen yet, I'm sure, but you know, Father Giussani describes how, you know, John met, An John and Andrew met Jesus, who met, who met, who met, all the way down to my mother, right? And you, Father Michael, met Father Rich, who, you know, it, it, there, there's, there's, we've met Christ through somebody, a face, right? So, Father Phil, did you want to respond, ask something? No, that's a hand up. Anyone else a hand up? We have about five minutes. I'm going to just, I'm going to say extremely quickly. Okay. What, what Father Michael reminded me of just listening to him, giving me a greater appreciation of who Jasani is. In one of, in one of the meetings with Jasani, Jasani said to me, these relationships of, of, of father and mother, we become fathers and mothers to one another at different times. And he says, and this kind of love of father and mother, these are echoes of what is happening in God. You know, and so the beauty of the beauty, I think, of the companionship is it's uh, well it, that, that you, the what Jasani would say, you know, look at the last to arrive. There, there's there's not a hierarchy of chronology as far as how deeply you're moved by the charism, and and Jasani said, so look to the last to arrive because they're going to wake your heart up. Because you, for you, it might be coming, becoming something that's ossified or been there, done that, or I'm just happy to be part of the tribe. But then somebody else comes and encounters and reminds you the depth and the life that this encounter promises. Thank you, beautiful. Anyone else? We still have time for one or two more questions or comments. I think it was so beautiful. There's just no words. <laughs> so, Barbara, Father Rich, um, Rich, did you, Rick, did you have a question? You look like you got one burning in you. Do you want to unmute Rick Kushner? There we go. Yeah, I, I didn't have a question, but I, I just enjoyed everything that I've been hearing so much. You know, I, I just feel like uh, my gratitude. Uh, for this, uh, for this thing that has taken us all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mary Ellen. I just wanted to say that due to the incredible generosity of Renzo and Christina Canetta, who I believe are on this in, in this meeting, um, I, I met the movement through them. And uh, in 1989, there was an in, international vacation in Corvara in Italy. And uh, Renzo mentioned it at a, our school community. I just met the movement the year before. And it went in one ear and out the other because I had no money at the time. I had no no means to get there, and so I just kind of dismissed it immediately. But Renzo went to me after school community. He said, "Mary Ellen, I would like. I think you need to go." I said, "Renzo, I I have no money. I can't. There's no way I can go." He said, "Yes, you will go." And he gave me a ticket. He never asked for any money back. Um, and I went to Italy, and I went to the international vacation, and that was the moment in which I said, this is for my life. Uh, when I heard Father Giussani speak, I wrote literally 25 pages of notes and I cried from, from the moment he opened his mouth. It was like a cathartic experience. I, I was so embarrassed. I used my sleeve to hold the tears. I just was, and, and it's amazing how many years later, um, this was 1989, I've been at a few of these sessions and it's the same thing. I'm crying. I just heard John Zucchi and Francesca speak of their encounter. And it was like hearing John and Andrew. And I, I cried the entire time, but um, in my house, I'm in Memorist Domini and in my house, 
everybody teases me because the first line that fell out of Father Jasani's mouth struck me forever. And everyone teases me and they, they invert the words because I say it all the time. And Umbretta in my house just teases me and, and says the phrase in a different way. Anyway, the words he said, the sentence he said to begin the international vacation was, the true heart is always new. The true heart is always new. And I, this was my first time hearing Father Jasani, but I knew immediately that these words were profoundly true for him. And I knew I wanted that. And being here at the New York Encounter, even virtually, it's amazing the explosion. I'm feeling of this experience again, virtually. It's amazing. Christ, I was writing to Christina. Christina and I were texting after the last session of, of this exhibit with John and Francesca. She was there too. And uh, I said, you know, it makes you realize Christ, Christ is unstoppable. And he turns your world upside down. But then I said, well, maybe the right word is he turns your world right side up. I was upside down. He turned me right side up. Um, so I, I, it's, again, the true heart is always new. You hear John Zuki, a new, a new man. You know, and, he, it's, and the last thing I want to say very, very quickly is um, during the uh, question and answer session, I was really shocked because I had just met the movement. And the first question to Father Jasani was, what do you desire for the movement? And I, being new to the movement, I had this preconception, oh, Father Jasani is going to say, oh, I want the movement to grow. I want it to explode in the US or, or whatever. This was his movement. So I expected something like that. And I was blown away, not only by the answer, by the, but by the, the genuineness with which he conveyed it. I knew, I knew every word out of his mouth was profoundly true from his, from the bottom of his being. I can't explain. I've never heard anyone speak like that. But what his answer was to what would you like for the movement? He said, your happiness. He said to that person and the happiness of every one of you. And this just blew my, blew me away. It's, still blows me away. And I knew it was true. Thank you, Mary Ellen. So I want to thank our guests, Father Rich and Barbara. Um, it's really beautiful. And um, I think you just said it, you know, you're, you're reborn again and again and again, listening to our friends retell what happened to you. So thank you, Father Rich. Um, for thank you, Holly. Thank you for hosting this. It's been spectacular. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you have...